against um, the motion as I did when it was previously before us. Um, I think this is a fine development, just a fine development, and uh, I think uh, when we're getting down to talking about would it be better with seven lots as opposed to eight lots, I think it really starts uh, uh, getting a bit moot. Um, would the eighth lot uh, make a negative impact on the neighboring properties? No. Would the eighth lot contribute significantly to the amount of traffic coming out onto Cordova Bay Road? No. Would the eighth lot degrade the land in a deleterious way over time? No. So I totally understand why the staff has recommended this, and I support them for it. I understand that what goes into the, the math that makes it all work. And having said that, looking at the reality and the practicality of it, um, the request for the eighth lot um, I find uh, quite supportable. And so I won't be uh, supporting this motion. I will be hoping to be able to be supporting a motion that might follow it if it is defeated. Thank you, Mr. Price. It's a sense of deja vu for myself here. Uh, Council Haynes, Bergland, and then Mr. Mayor. Um, I too am going to speak against this motion. I won't reiterate the comments made by um, my colleague, Councillor Bryce. Um, but I'll add to this, um, one of the issues we have with housing in Saanich that is very difficult for any of us to fix, and even when the new government coming in will not be able to fix it, is the price of land. Um, we've heard that the seven to eight change doesn't add much to traffic, it won't add much to greenhouse, um, it won't add much to impact on the neighbours. We've had the neighbours speak in favour of it. I read the letters. There was an adjustment in the actual design of the roof, roof line <coughs> to make it more um, suitable to the neighbours' uh, uh, wishes. So I respect that. And I don't see the change from 8 to 7 changing that. But where I do see 8 to 7 important, being important is the, in the economic base of this development. We want to have successful developments in Sandwich. And therefore, I'll be speaking against this, and I'll be making a different motion to support option two. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor Burton. Thank you very much, Chair. I too will be speaking against it. I don't believe this development is a high density development in any sense of the word, and I'm not sure that seven lots will make for a better subdivision. I believe eight lots will make for better land use of the area, and I think that's important. I'd also like to make a comment. I think there are times when we don't put enough value on replanting. And I believe, uh, as we see that adjacent property developed, I believe we'll see a lot of blow downs on this site. I could be wrong, but I remember, like, Mr. McLaren, he made a comment when he did the subdivision on Mount Dunn, mm -hmm. as, on, as on council. And we were adamant that they preserve all the trees. And the first storm we had, it wiped out over half the trees. And so, as we make changes to the forest around us, I think we have to look at replanting and allow new trees to get planted and look to the future a bit too. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Apple? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll also be speaking against this motion, and hopefully a second motion will come forward. Uh, the, the, the main objections I have, uh, or the main objections I've heard to this with regard to the eighth property, um, for me, it's not significant enough given the geography and the other houses in the area. If we're really going to be addressing the number of cars on the road, I think we need to do that at, at a much higher level than to, in, in what I would call micromanagement of the number of buildings that can fit on a particular site. It's, it's really, you know, surely one more car isn't a problem, but in the same way it is. And um, but I don't feel we should be covering the development so much. And looking at the edge of this property that starts to form a cliff when we allow the properties to be built on cliff and require geotechnical constraints and, uh, and so forth to be uh, considered and, um, and the municipality is saved harmless from any damages that might come from um, it being so close to those cliffs. So, it's certainly an issue that's going to keep coming up at this council but we don't have a lot of land for single family homes. And I think as a council, we have to make a, a higher level decision on how we want to develop land in Sandwich <coughs> um, rather than subject developers to this kind of um, financial burden. Um, sometimes these properties aren't profitable and um, the price of them 
are affected by the number of homes that you can put on the properties. I think that's something that has to be considered along with all the other factors. It's certainly a difficult decision. Um, we have differences of opinion here. I don't think we have all the facts. I think we gain a great knowledge as more and more of these developments come forward. But for me, this particular property, I think it's a stand to have eight homes on it as it's been put forth by the applicant and as approved by our planning department. The option two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Sanders. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be supporting the motion. I'm supporting the motion as it's the one supported by staff for one reason. That respects the input from the community association, which I do believe is very important. Here's the local <coughs> land policy that reduces impervious surface, which I think is exceptionally important. And one thing, of course, that is very important to me is the need for district parking. I live on a street that does have district parking, but it still is never not district parking. So to uh, think that there it's going to be adequately provided on each site is, I think, um, not reasonable. So there's there's that issue. Uh, this plan will have only parking on one side of the street, so which will come compound that issue, as well as this is on a very busy street, which has no, no on-street parking or be able to <coughs> provide for that. Uh, by having only seven lots, it will reduce the uh, need for the width variance, and I think this is um, the staying with seven lots meets the, the lot average he has we have in the local area plan, so I will be supporting the plan. Thank you, Councillor Sanders. Oops. Uh, any first time, otherwise we'll go second time to Mr. German. Councillor German. Seeing none, Councillor German. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I find it interesting uh, when we get the kind of comments that one additional lot, one, one or two or three or four additional cars won't overload something, and of course they won't. But uh, uh, if you look at the history of this council already, there have been applications that have proved up on Cadover Bay Ridge and elsewhere that are clearly auto-centric. And I hope that council has heard the phrase, death of a thousand cuts, because that's exactly what is happening over time. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Brown. It works. Okay, um, so uh, I supported option one last time. And the reason I did uh, was uh, what's listed here, help to mitigate tree loss, reduce impervious services, improve the siting on house lot one, and eliminate and or reduce the requested lot variances. That's the, that is a key one for me, so I am going to support option one again. Uh, although I did hear from the applicant, he has some changes to make around lot one and some other things to bring forward if it goes on to public hearing, but I am going to support it. Thank you, and let's call it a full eight. Councillor Murdoch. <laughs> Not me, I think, actually. We need to hear from you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I've, I've thought a lot about this since it failed on a tie vote the last time, and um, I, I specifically directed the concerns I had to Mr. Mari when he had the opportunity to, to answer the questions with respect to the trees and, and then uh, the setback mitigation. Um, I could do math based on where things went last time, and I suspect that we're going to see this motion fail. Um, I'm, I'm not going to support this motion. I think I could, I can live with an additional lot in this location. Um, I'm, I am very interested to see what uh, kind of changes would take place that would mitigate the setback, the um, variance uh, on the setback, and then um, I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm taking it on faith in the answer on trees. Uh, so I, for that reason, I'd be quite prepared to see this go to the public hearing. But uh, I'm still disappointed that that there isn't a better way to try and save more of the trees. Appreciating, of course, that a number of the trees here are identified as poor condition. Um, so, or sorry, poor health. Um, so I, I think I'll join my colleagues in, in, in defeating this motion, not that I disagree with the spirit of it, uh, but I think for the reasons that has been stated, um, I could be comfortable with uh, with eight rather than seven, and, and seeing this further hung up in a in a discussion about interpreting the, the legislation. Thank you, Mr. Murdoch. I'll just weigh in briefly, if I may, Council, just to say it for me that my mindset is very similar to what was last time we heard about this, and I'm comfortable with eight. Uh, I think the, the trees issue is uh, has to be mitigated by the fact that a lot of these trees are not healthy. And so that's uh, where I would be looking at to potentially see otherwise. Death of a thousand cuts? Yeah, I've heard that many times. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, I shall put the motion, which was moved by Councillor German. All those in favor? Thank you. Opposed? 
motion fails with Councillor Bryce, Wordlin, Murdoch, Mayor Atwell, Councillor Sanders, pardon, Councillor oh, Haynes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm tired. And, and I'll show myself as opposed to so, wow. Councillor Haynes. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, meant by that. My fatigue is too excited. No, I'm just tired. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, very much. Madam Clerk, second item, please. Uh, oh, the motion. Option two. Move option two. I guess I mean, there's a second. Do I'd like to speak to it? Council Mayor Abel, please open on this, Mr. Haynes. Um, I'll reflect further on this. Um, when I read deeply into the file, you see that there was an initial proposal for ten housing houses, and then nine, and then eight, and then seven. And as someone who works in business, you come together with a business proposal for a new project. If someone says, okay, off the bat, 30% is missing, this is a tough economic decision to make. And so as we look at death by a thousand cuts, we can also look at success by a thousand cuts, or death of the economic viability of opportunities in Saanich. So I think when we look at affordability across Saanich, of course it has to be balanced with climate change. <coughs> It has to be balanced with the environment. And we have to take all these things into consideration with the community around it. I have not heard the community speak against eight. I do see that the association spoke on the point of variance, not, in, not enjoying variance, speaking against variance, just for that point of principle. I've heard the residents say what they wanted to see was lower roofs. I see that in place. I think if there's a challenge on this development, it would be one I spoke to earlier, which is the idea of a road allowance. I would like that never to be a road. I'd like to see that keep as a path. I'm not quite sure yet the mechanism within Sanix that we might do that when we work with the provincial bylaw. Um, that's a story for another day. Um, I think um, the applicant has put forward a very commendable uh, development. Um, I'm pleased to see that they're going to put in a bus station, a bus stop there. I believe the bus already stops there, but it will just make it more convenient for people to get to that bus and use it. Um, I'd like to suggest when they come to public hearing that they increase on their one-to-one -one replacement of trees. Um, I want to suggest what it could be. It could be 1.5, 1.2, 2, I don't know. Please look at that and see what you can address for the long-term health of that uh, tree camp. Thank you, Councillor Haynes, Councillor Dermott, Councillor Bryce. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I will not support this motion. Uh, Sign up for the reasons that I mentioned already. Uh, in terms of the climate change issue, uh, the argument that we have to have the economic viability uh, and support certain things that are contrary to climate change objectives are exactly the reason that over time we have got where we are and virtually with the ability to threaten all of human society. Uh, nobody ever, I think, and, and the other side of it in terms of congestion, I, I doubt there's any council has passed a application that would clearly, by itself, create huge amounts of congestion. Uh, I, I don't think anybody does that. The way it happens, and it has happened in this region over the last 20, 30 years, is councils pass a series of applications that are going to add to the problem. And it may be only one or three or four cars here and only ten over there, but the net result is exactly the fact that you get the cumulative impact, which is something that we don't look at in any of these applications, and over time the situation comes worse. And we are doing, in this council, and the decisions we make, exactly the same thing. I prefer to learn from the past. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bryce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not going to uh, say anything other than to say I support option two, and I'm assuming that all the text under the recommendation uh, is included in that motion, just for the record, the details required by the staff for the next phase of this. That was my I see our clerk nodding in agreement, so we will assume it is. <coughs> Council had a good first go around on the first vote motion, but on the second motion, which we're now debating, <coughs> Mayor Apple. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
looking at a particular um, development proposal here, but it's turned a bit of a the debate on how to address climate change. And I don't really want to get into a debate, but I think at, at this level that essentially requiring developers to address climate change, I, I think is pro probably not the, the best way of, of doing that. If we don't allow this aid home to be built, if we pass the earlier motion, and the home gets built in another part of Sandwich or in another community, and there's a car, uh, this is the main problem with greenhouse gases, um, being parked at that property and being used and driven a further distance that we don't have any control of. I don't know if we even prevented that thousandth cut from happening. But the council has to, I think, put its mind to finding a high-level solution um, to addressing the rate of cars coming into the community, uh, the amount of immigration into the community, the amount of um, mobility that exists within this country, and um, to simply to focus it on developments like this and deciding that we're going to have to make one house less, I, I don't think, in my opinion, is, is, is dealing with the rate that the climate is changing. I think we're far behind the curve in focusing our efforts on it this way. I really think we need something high level to do that, and I'd like to bring that back to council level way indeed so that we can have that discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Atwell. Seeing no further speakers, I'm just going to ask Madam Clerk to confirm what would be included in option two as the motion has moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, what will be included is that the application uh, for the eight lot uh, subdivision uh, be forwarded to public hearing, and that more detailed design guidelines and building of uh, the eight points outlined in the body of the report, which are uh, just for clarity, showing on uh, page uh, 26 of the, uh, the agenda. Um, be submitted prior to public hearing. There will be a supplemental report that will accompany that when it comes back to public hearing. So this would be moving to public hearing for the general audience's understanding of where we would be moving to. I do see Councillor Haynes asking to speak again. I'll speak briefly on this um, particular application. Um, I'm sensitive, of course, like my colleagues, to climate change. One of the benefits of option two is that there is mitigation of energy use by going to build green gold standard, equivalent energy efficiency in building design and construction standard, and are designed to be solar ready. If that's done across the eight houses, that will go a step towards mitigating climate change, admittedly in a micro level. That is not present in option two. That was partly why I was just, sorry, option one. This is also partly why I support option two. It says affordable and it looks to me to be the greener option. Thank you. Thank you. Council, we shall look for a decision here. All those in favor? Thank you. Opposed? The motion passes with Councillor Sanders. <laughs> sorry, Councillor Berman and Councillor Brownoff opposed. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, would you please introduce now the second item? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This next item is 4400 West Sandwich Road. It's a development permit and a resolve application. The report of the Director of Planning is recommending the Council discharge the existing land use contract. The Council approved rezoning uh, to the zone P2 utility and P4 recreation open space and approve the development permit for proposed redevelopment of an existing or the existing BC Hydro operation facility. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Council, do you have any questions of staff before we invite the applicant forward? Seeing none, I welcome the applicants forward. Please uh, make yourself uh, comfortable at the mic, and if you have, I think, a PowerPoint or something, welcome. Yes. If you wouldn't mind just including your name and address for the records as well. Yes, I will. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Architecture, 
And we have Ben Munchak um, uh, with uh, Lado. She is uh, our landscape architect. Um, as you mentioned, we have a presentation and we'll go to the slides and then we'll have uh, some questions. Good evening, so my name is Sherry and I'm here.
Jerry Leighton complied with the municipal water lighting standards and his bike storage and design uh, meets the intent of standards by bicycle parking guidelines. Uh, pedestrian circulation is much more improved. Um, currently, the site has uh, nearly none of pedestrian considerations. Uh, pretty much people, uh, pedestrians and cars go, there's just a lot of uh, paved uh, the new design has permitted to find the best way to access the public as the access to the uh, Public spaces, entry, and outdoor parking are created, which connect to ground floor access. The parking provisions to consider different transportation modes. Um, the sector of crime uh, prevention through environmental design principles are observed. Um, the architectural design is, uh, is much more improved. It's very contemporary, it's very open, it's really uh, different from the image we see on that facility, which is concrete, very close, uh, it's concrete walls, very solid. Um, uh, it's a high quality, durable, and high quality materials are being proposed. Um, the elevation of the building facing the public has architectural elements and landscape improvements that are, that are refreshing, transparent, and welcoming. The site design avoids interfering with existing water courses. The access to transit guidelines principles are followed in the pathways to buildings, landscaping, building entrances, ramps, and doors. Um, this is the, uh, the site plan. You can see the, uh, the proposed, there's one building, two of the existing main buildings are being consolidated into one, which is um, on the northern part of the, uh, the facility, um, which makes the, the, the site less congested. And there's actually some small structures uh, proposed that are pre engineered structures just for storage. And there are low profile of uh, one store buildings. The, the first the building in the front is uh, the main building, which has all the warehouses and uh, offices on the side. And this is the image of the, the, the uh, redeveloped facility facing the, uh, uh, the Royal Shopping Center. You can see it's, uh, it's a completely different. Uh, um, image that's uh, from what the high shoulder is the site. There's a <coughs> curtain wall, majority of this is curtain wall, so curtain wall is curtain wall is color strips, um, very fresh with the contemporary image of trying to create the high And here uh, there are two area views, uh, sorry, this is the area view and this is the back view that we found in the south of the site. Here you can see a clear defined path for pedestrian for, for, for every kind of uh, circulation. Uh, there's a well-defined path for services for staff and for public and for visitors. I'm not going to into detail, but definitely uh, if you have questions, we can look at that a little bit more. And the, uh, the I'm sorry, can you speak up a little louder? Yeah. I apologize. It's, it's hard well, to hear, and I'm, I'm, I'm leaning in and in. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm don't be. I'm sorry. You <laughs> mentioned it earlier. Okay, um, here is the proposed material palette um, that includes um, mainly high uh, quality um, metal cladding and we have a, a small amount of wood uh, cladding over the entrance area um, and also uh, the industrial part is also the metal, uh, pre-finished metal system which corrugated metal but very high quality and durable uh, finishes and the glass uh, metal curtain wall. And uh, sorry, <laughs> that's the end of mine. I'm going to hand it over to, to Bab to uh, speak about the language as well as the message. Good evening, I'm Gail Flynn Jack from Ladder Landscape Architects, and I'm just going to go through the highlights of the landscape design. Um, so first of all, we're creating a welcoming entrance to the building on the site. As Sherry mentioned before, it's really just a big concrete, nothing out there at the moment. And so the area that has the rectangle around it is really where the public can come and staff and visitor parking. And if anybody was going to the site to pay a bill or ask questions, they would be going into that area. So the north facade and the front entry to the building in that whole parking area is very well landscaped. It includes shrubs and trees. Up against the face of the building, there is a decorative paved um, sidewalk which has amenity areas along it. That's a very tiny scale because it's a big site, but there's amenity areas along it for staff. 
so they could go out and have their lunch out there, or take a break outside, there's seating for them that's under cover. And at the entrance to the building, which is up in this corner, this is where you come up with Saanich Road and enter the site, and then there's an entry to the building here. There's um, a plaza with benches, there's covered bicycle racks there, there's decorative paving, attractive landscaping again. So it's much more um, like you would expect going to a nice modern contemporary office or business facility than what is there now, which is really a, a, a workhorse uh, industrial site at the moment. Of the 229 trees on the site, only 43 will be removed, which is less than 2%. And 64 new trees will be planted, so the overall number of trees on the site is being increased. Two-thirds of all of the new trees will be native, and the remaining one-third will be hardy maples. And all of those maples are located in around the front entry in that more developed area, because they're very appropriate to that location. They're not going to lift the paving or get um, interfere with any of the uh, sidewalks or the cars. And also because they add a little bit of an ornamental effect where we need it most, where the public are coming in. Screening of the year of the <coughs> rear yard. So this is the big work yard. Uh, the screening of the rear yard is pretty much the same as exists now. At the back of the site, on the south edge, there'll be an eight-foot chain link fence with privacy slats. That's what exists now to um, buffer it against the neighbors. And there's also substantial vegetation that's going to be retained to keep that buffer going. So all of these massed green areas that you see along the edge, on the way.